What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Doing a collection video today. This is a video voted by my Patreon. So, um, on Patreon, if you were one of my patrons, you had an opportunity to vote on a list of videos that I will be coming out with in the next little while. Number one on many people's list, which is why, points wise, it ended up being the first video I do, was a collection video. And... Basically what I'm doing here is I'm splitting my collection into parts because I have a whole bunch of whiskey. A lot of my collection is still in a bunker elsewhere. And the reason why I chose these for today is because they kind of go with each other uh, or the other ones that I have that I didn't put in today's video um, go together as well. So long story short, this is one of two collection videos. I'm gonna go through each of these, let you know what I have here. Uh, but more importantly, I'm going to tell you exactly why I collect right now. So essentially why I collect is this. I buy two of each whiskey that I think I'm going to really like. Often I'm buying these blind. I don't know necessarily that I'm going to like them or not. But when I try them, I determine whether or not I'm going to keep that second bottle. Often, if I don't like it, I'll flip it. Uh, Sometimes I just make back what I bought it for. Sometimes I make a little bit of profit. It helps go towards the channel. It helps go towards uh, buying new bottles. Um, most times I stash them. And the reason why I stash them, what qualifies as a stashed bottle is a bottle that I know I really enjoy that if I get stuck with in the future, I have no problem opening a second bottle of. Um, and pretty much everything on this table today fits into that category. There are a couple that don't, and I'll explain why, um, but same with all the other bottles that I have bunkered. So part one starts with the Campbelltown specials on my left over here. We got the Springbank 12 year old cash strength. This is the 56.5% ABV 12 year old. It is a phenomenal whiskey. I reviewed this whiskey on my channel. I haven't had too many other of the 12 year olds. So I bought three bottles of these, went through two of them, gave this one an incredible mark. I'm stashing this one for a rainy day because I know I'm gonna wanna open them. The secondary value on these is not huge in North America. In the UK and Europe, uh, what ends up happening is all the Springbank 12 year olds sell out really quick whenever there's a release and then people are willing to spend a little bit more on the bottle, but that doesn't really happen here. So for that reason, uh, this is a bottle to open in the future, not necessarily a bottle to collect. Going on to my long rows, I have the newest of the long row releases other than the, the newest long row red. The newest long row red has not been released in Canada yet or North America for that matter. A few people did find a way to get it, uh, purchasing probably from the UK or Europe. This one was the last one to be released, which was the Sherry 14 year old. That's this bad boy right here. 57.8%. Um, I really, really like this stuff. I think Campbell, Campbelltown whiskey, particularly Springbank whiskeys and Longrow whiskeys, Hazelburn whiskeys are best when they are cast strength. Um, that's just my opinion, of course. I do love the mustiness that everybody talks about when it comes to Springbank, Longrow. Um, I love it. So. This one's awesome. A lot of people are either hit or miss with this one. They either love it or they hate it. I'm in the category that loves it. Uh, so again, that's the long row 14 year old Sherry. Moving on over here, I have the recently acquired but released quite a while ago, um, long row red fresh port. This one is 51.8%. Really, really nice stuff. I had an opportunity to compare this with some of the others when I did a video about a year ago uh, with Jeremy. We did this one, we did the Cap Franc, we did the Malbec, and the Cap Franc actually won, but this one came close second. This was really, really nice. Over here I have the Cabernet Franc, or the Cap Franc. It is 55.9%, also a long row red. Um, I'm missing the Australian Shiraz, as well as the Cabernet Sauvignon. 
Aside from the newest one that hasn't reached Canada yet, I will be getting that one. That one will be relatively easy to acquire, but the other two um, are really expensive now. They go for pretty high prices. You're looking at about uh, 200 to 250 American, depending on uh, where you're buying from. These come in at around $100 to $150 Canadian when they are retail. So uh, they've gone up quite a bit in price. I would buy them if I could at that price, uh, despite the fact that they are secondary prices, just because I love them and I want to complete the collection. Over here I have the Longro Red Malbec. This one is 51.3%. Really, really nice. This was my intro to the, the Longro Reds. I love this stuff. I would go through as many bottles as I can. I know there's still a bunch available in some parts of um, Alberta and I will be looking to acquire another one just to drink. And then last but not least for the reds, I have the fresh Pinot Noir. The newest one is also a Pinot Noir. Um, this is not that. This is the older version. Uh, this was quite a while back now. It's from New Zealand, this Pinot Noir. Uh, the cast that they used. Really, really nice stuff. I really like that one. And then last with the Campbelltown Long Rows and Springbanks, I got the Long Row 18 year old. These are bottled at 46%. I really like this. If I could recommend to anybody that's looking to buy a Campbelltown, go with the Long Row 18 over the Springbank 18 any day. This is definite buy for me. All right, going on to some bourbons here and American whiskeys. I have the Rebel Yell 10 year old. That's this bad boy right here. This one's sealed. I have a backup somewhere over here um, that I will be reviewing shortly. This was bottled in 2016. From everything I've been told, they're not gonna be making this anymore. It's a peated bourbon bottled at 50%. Um, so look for this one to climb in price in the next little while. These came out at the LCBO for a very brief amount of time. They were about $100 each. It was this year. Um, they may or may not be getting any more. I doubt that we'll see this ever again. But um, I'm really happy to acquire it because the same thing as the Larceny, just at 10 years old as opposed to 6 or 7 years old. So really, really nice stuff. 50%. You can't go wrong with this one. i got a couple of these Jack Daniels barrel proofs now. Um, they recently came to Canada and I was able to acquire a couple of them. I opened a couple of them to see the comparison in different ABVs and that sort of thing. They are all single barrel. Um, the ones from Alberta, for whatever reason, are 700 milliliters. I'm not 100% sure why that is. Uh, that's very rare for American whiskeys. But um, I haven't tried this one from Alberta, but the ones from Quebec are really nice. So I was really happy with that. And I stock up, I stock up on this whenever I get a chance. Next up, I have the Jack Daniels Heritage. This is also a single barrel. This one flew off shelves. It's delicious stuff. It's 50%. It's going for astronomical prices. Now you're looking at anywhere from 250 American to 350 American and the price will continue to climb because they are not making this any more. It's a one-off, just fantastic stuff. I highly recommend it, especially if you can get it for retail. This one has mixed reviews. It's the Little Book Part 2, which is a combination of three types of whiskey. Eight-year-old Kentucky rye, 40-year-old Canadian corn whiskey, and 13-year-old Canadian rye whiskey. All right. Um, it was a one-off as well. The Little Book 1 is a different blend than this one is, and I think every book that they come out with is going to be a little bit different. Uh, these are also very collectible. They are limited. Um, really, really nice stuff. You have to like Canadian rye to like this whiskey, but you're getting Canadian rye at cast strength, which is always cool. Um, you'll also get a little bit of a taste of what the Canadian club 40 year old would taste like at cast strength, which is expected to be released at cast strength in the next little while. So keep your eye out for that one. All right, so over here we have the Talisker 8, another one-off whiskey, um, really, really nice. It's a cast strength whiskey, 59.4%. People went crazy for this stuff. It sold out in a flash. I don't know if there's any available anymore, but 
uh, very, very limited, under 7,000 bottles as far as I know, or maybe under 8,000, whichever it is, that's global. So uh, if you can get this whiskey, I highly recommend you find it and buy it because it's delicious and the price of this will go up quite a bit in my opinion. All right, over here you have two MC01s and an MRC01. All right, MCO1s over here. These are from 2009 distillate. Um, it's nine years old, I believe. 56.3%. These are aged in a Marsala cask. One of the best whiskeys I've tried this year. I absolutely love this whiskey. That's why I have two of them. I do plan on opening another one. Uh, the MRCO1 is a Bordeaux cask. I like this one a lot as well, just not as much as the MCO one. So if you have an opportunity to pick up the Marsala, I highly recommend you grab that. But these are all great. You cannot go wrong. Um, Brook Laddie's coming out with some incredible stuff. And these are a great example of that. Some older stuff that Brook Laddie's come out with uh, is the Octomore 6.3 and 7.3. These bottles are beautiful. The whiskey is beautiful. You have to really like Pete to like these. But... That being said, I, I know a lot of people that started their peat journey drinking in an Octomore. So um, although it's super intense, it's the type of peat that people can really get, a, get behind because it's more of that barbecue style as opposed to that uh, iodine medicinal style, um, which I love. I, I think these are fantastic and these are easily collectible because they're all limited and these were at one point, about 350 American each, the 6.3. So uh, look for most of the, the 0.3 series to go up that high. I do have some more Octomores that I will be revealing in my next video, uh, but these two are definitely the gems of the batch. Moving over to a, the only bottle that I haven't actually tried in my collection, which is the Glenn Farkless 22 year old 105. Um, this one's bottled at 60%. It's one of 3,600 bottles. I was only able to acquire one, and that's why I haven't opened it. Um, I don't want to gamble on this bottle just because I've never been a huge fan of Glenn Farkless. So for that reason, I've decided to keep this one sealed, hope that I get a sample of it to decide whether or not I want to open this bottle. Um, but I do feel like this is highly collectible, so I did take the opportunity and grab the one when I had the chance. One of the whiskeys that I've had in my collection for a long time, and these are also the type of whiskeys that will end up in my collection um, because they're whiskeys that I really enjoy, that I find at a good price, um, that I will open again. Uh, I went through a bottle of the Anak 18 already once. It's bottled at 46%. I find it's one of the better 18-year-old whiskeys out there. It's unchill filtered, no added color. It's everything that I want in a whiskey, other than the fact that it's not peated, but when I don't want a peated whiskey, I definitely would go to an, a knock 18 year old. This one's sealed, I'll probably open it soon. I don't think it'll be worth anything in particular. Um, the value might go up over the years as far as what the retail cost goes, but this is not the type of whiskey that I'm looking to spin to buy a bunch of other whiskey with. Um, it's one of those whiskeys that I like to have in my bar just so that I can have something to open when I feel like it. This is a more rare Klein Leash. This is 46%, it was distilled in 1997. It's 14 years old, uh, bottled in 2011. Um, it's a mix of bourbon and sherry casks. It's relatively rare, not very expensive if you can still find it for retail. I bought this for about 100 Canadian. I do have a second bottle, which I will be reviewing shortly. I lent it to Jeremy. He actually got the review out of it uh, first. So check out his video if you haven't already. I like it a lot. I think I like it a lot more than Jeremy does. Um, so yeah, look for that to come in the, in the next few weeks or so. But I like it a lot. I think it's good stuff. Lefroy 18. Uh, a lot of speculation as to whether or not it's better than the white tin Lefroy 18. This was bottled a while back. Um, it's 48%. No added color, of course. Uh, until filtered also um, it's incredible stuff this beat out a ton of whiskeys in the 18 year old category for me 
and I rated this as one of my favorite 18 year olds. Um, I think if I had to redo that video, some things would change. I don't think my opinion on this changes though. It's, it's phenomenal. Maybe it's not the best 18 year old whiskey uh, that I've had at this moment in my life, but at the time it definitely was. And um, these are hard to come by. So if you can get them, stock up on them because the value of these should go up in the next little while. A lot of people are balking at the prices right now that are around $300 to $400 Canadian. Uh, but to find an 18 year old that's 48% that has the quality that this one does is very rare. So if you can get it, I wouldn't mind spending $300 on a backup bottle of this. Last but not least, we go to the gems of this parts collection. Um, so part one again is this video. Part two will be coming out hopefully in about a month's time, maybe a little bit longer than that. We'll see what happens. Um, hopefully by then I'll, I'll have completed my long grow red set and then you guys will see what the other bottles are like. Um, but this is a bottle that won whiskey of the year for me in the second year that I had this channel running. This is the Bow Blair 1993 Gordon McPhail 49.6%. Um, for a long while, people were trying to buy this bottle off me, uh, offering me actually some very, very good money. Uh, I've had offers of up to 450, close to $500 for, for this whiskey. Uh, I've opted not to sell it, and I don't think I will sell this unless I'm blown away by a price. Because when I evaluate what I can get for $500 Canadian, there is not much that I can get that I like better than this. Um, that's another reason I tend to collect things. When I find something at a great price and I evaluate it against things that I've tried in that category that cost around the same price um, or more, the ones that stand out to me are stuff like this. The Gordon McPhail, is, this is a cash strength at 49.6%. Uh, Gordon McPhail, almost anything I've loved, uh, but there are the ones that stand out even more so than others. And I really do love this stuff. I think it's phenomenal. Um, you cannot go wrong. As far as value goes, I don't think I will get, you know, if I, if I invested in other bottles, I'd make more money than I would on some Gordon McPhail bottles. But again, I go by the algorithm of the quality. Will I be willing to open that bottle again uh, if push came to shove and I wasn't able to flip it? Um, and the answer is I would definitely open this again and thoroughly enjoy it. So I would have no problem uh, leaving $500 on the table and opening that bottle. All right, um, you guys have seen my review of the Mortlock 1987 uh, Gordon McPhail. It comes in a wooden box. These boxes are not the best quality boxes, which I kind of like because that tells me that I'm paying for the liquid inside and not necessarily the um, the box and the presentation. This is, like I said, a 1987 Mortlock. It's super dark despite being a refill barrel, 54% cast strength, only 200 bottles ever made. Um, this bottle has excellent ratings, aside from the fact that Jeremy and I both absolutely adore this. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with who I'm referring to, that's Jeremy from Super Social Club. He's been on my channel a ton of times. Um, this ball is incredible, all right? Uh, the highest mark I've ever given a whiskey so far. I gave this one a 95. Check out the video. I do a rundown of a few Gordon McPhails, one being the Bowbler 1993 Connoisseur's Choice, which is this bottle right here that is now empty. The other one being the... Aberfeldy Gordon McPhail Connoisseur's Choice, and then I did the Mortlock last, and this one obviously won the challenge, but check out the video anyway because uh, you might learn a little bit more about this whiskey um, than I have time to share right now. Really, really great stuff. Possibly the best whiskey I've ever tried. Um, I bought this bottle because the date matched my birthday and I read up on it and it had incredible reviews. It's the Gordon McPhail Linkwood 1984. I haven't reviewed this yet. I do have the bottle um, open, the one I shared with Jeremy as well. Um, that review is coming. But I bought a backup because 
I didn't think I'd have an opportunity to buy this ever again. And I'm probably right. There's under 500 bottles ever made, 481 to be exact. It's cast strength at 58.1%. It's 34 years old, as am I. It's distilled in 1984. Uh, the year I was born. So that's one of the reasons why I bought this bottle. Um, I'm not gonna lie. But the other reason I bought this bottle is it is incredibly reviewed. It has over a 93 on whiskey base, which is an incredible mark. I loved the fact that I was able to try this. It's insanely expensive. Part of the reason I collect is for the days where I have to sell a bunch of stuff to buy a bottle like this. And that's exactly what I had to do here. Um, incredible stuff though. Really, really happy with it. Uh, really happy I spent the money. Again, I don't know if this will ever be worth what I put into it. Um, it might continue at around $1,300 Canadian and just stay there forever. But if it goes up, great. I don't know if I'll ever sell this, whis this whiskey anyway because again, what will I find in the $2,000 range that's much better than this? I probably won't find much. You're looking at like a Macallan 25 year old, um, maybe a Brora 35 year old. Um, the Brora 35 year old I haven't had a chance to try. I think I will have a chance to try that soon. Uh, so I'll know better whether or not this is better than that in, in due time. But I highly doubt that a Macallan 25 year old at 2200 Canadian uh, would beat that at 1200 or 1300 Canadian. So um, for those reasons, I tend to go with the cast strength whiskeys, especially when they're super old uh, and the Gordon McPhail have hardly ever, if ever, disappointed. All right, guys. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You guys can participate in voting for what videos come out next by being a Patreon on my channel. So go to Whiskey in the Six on Patreon. There's a link on my homepage, so you guys can check out the Patreon, uh, see if you want to put $1, $2, whatever you guys decide. Anything helps, and that gives you an opportunity to vote on what videos I will be releasing in the near future. So this was a voted video, and I'm happy they actually voted for it because I love doing these kinds of videos. It helps me see what I have, see what I want to share. Um, and coming up will be the second video of their vote. They put a top 10 list together. So there's 23 guys putting in a top 10 list. Um, so you guys will see what's coming out in the next little while. And I think that should be pretty cool. Cheers guys.